Swinburne University of Technology. Today I'm talking with Professor Per Mollerup, who is a Professor of Design here at Swinburne University of Technology in the Faculty of Health, Arts and Design and the Department of Communication Design and Digital Media Design. Uh, he's an absolute expert in design communication, which after all is what design is all about. It is uh, communication and he is interested in simplicity in design, uh, data visualisation, branding, signage, ways of showing, among many other aspects of design. Today I'm speaking with him as a writer about the textuality and discourse of design. So it is, as it were, a multi-layered text that uh, Pear works with, both the actual physical design and talking and communicating about design. So the first thing I'm going to say to Pear is thank you for your two books, which are Simplicity, A Matter of Design and Ways of Showing, Ways of Knowing. And uh, Pear has published very widely in those kinds of areas. So what's the importance of actual writing that down and also, of course, the visual text for you in, in your writing? Well, there are several reasons. Of course, it would be nice to say that I write to share my knowledge. But actually, I uh, think I write to understand. I do know that we uh, write for several reasons. We write to remember. That's probably the first type of writing ever. Uh, we write to communicate, and we write to understand. I'm a uh, voracious reader, and I don't think that I know anything if I haven't read about it also. And I don't think I own it before I have written about it. By writing, you understand things. You have a con conversation with the person you know more than anybody else, yourself. And when you talk with your paper, you have this communication with yourself, then you get to understand the things. And you know much, much better what you have written about than what you have only read about or heard about. Well, like yourself, I'm a voracious reader and writer, and I was really interested in your passionate commitment to ways of knowing, ways of showing, and to simplicity. So perhaps you'd like just to talk a little about those aspects of your writing. I think both books are about simplicity. In fact, I think all design good design books are about simplicity. It's about making life easier in one respect or another. Um, the way showing book, way showing, way finding, I did that because I worked with those things. I had a studio, a studio for 25 years in Copenhagen where we did signage, way showing for airport, Copenhagen, Oslo, Stockholm. And um, to know something about what we were doing when we did the signage in Copenhagen, we had never made a sign before. Uh, I read what it, there was to read and um, I didn't think it was good enough. So eventually I wrote my own book about that. Uh, and that's very much about simplicity, how you guide people through a built complex environment. Uh, simplicity, in the simplicity book, I would say simplicity, if there's one concept which has been behind everything I have done, that is simplicity. I um, have done simple design. I think, I think I like the illusion that I write in a simple way, which is simple to the readers. So uh, whatever I have written before has in a way been about simplicity. Uh, branding, that's a simple way of understand our commercial environment. How would we find our preferred goods if there were no brands in the grocery shop. Uh, brands are a way of simplifying commerce. Uh, data visualization, well, we can understand a lot of big numbers and things when we see them visualized, but not without. If we only see the raw, rare numbers, then we don't understand the things. And uh, that's the whole way through. And then I think that um, the Simplicity book, that is my result that I'm acknowledging what I have done all the time and putting that together in the Simplicity book. And uh, I think this is important because, as I said, simplicity is behind all good design and uh, it's the most sought after quality among designers. They don't make that clear to themselves always, but simplicity is really what they're looking for. And when I read some of your book and hear what you're saying, it comes to me what a paradox simplicity is because it really is extraordinarily complex in its simplicity. Would you like to have some commentary on that? Yeah, um, the big 
I, as I saw, is the big problem with simplicity and understand simplicity that is um, in language. Um, we say something is simple, and when we say that, we mean many different things depending on the situation. Uh, the normal, uh, simple definition of simplicity is something which consists of relatively few elements and which is easy to understand or analyze or things like that. But those two components, they are quite different. Uh, uh, consisting of few elements, that's a physical thing, that's a fact of the world, that's um, an objective thing. You can count how many elements there are, but um, simple to understand or analyze, that's a state of mind, that's something which is subjective and that depends on the situation, on the person who looks at it. Is it sim if you haven't learned mathematics in school, a uh, equation of second degree might be very complicated to you uh, and very simple to me. So it depends very much on the person. Uh, the problem is that we use simple in both situations. We use it as the antonym, the opposite of complex and complicated. Something which is complex consists of many elements. Something which is complicated is difficult to understand. We have only this monolithic simple or simplicity, which is the antonym of two different things. Mm. To understand it in a design context, I have divided it into a quantity simplicity and a quality simplicity. The quality thing that is uh, about the understanding, the quantity thing that is about the facts of the world, how much there is. And I think that helps us understand that in different situations we mean different things with simplicity. Thank you very much, Pear. Um, and of course, signs and meaning, as you've just said, are in the built environment all around us, and indeed the not built environment, the natural yeah. environment, yeah. but we're talking, I suppose, about constructed signs and uh, meanings, and they go from directions to advertising to roads to homes and workplaces, and, and we live within this design constructed world. But what you want us to understand is that we can live better and easier, I think. Is that right? Uh, yes, I think we do that already, but I think also that um, designers should make themselves clear what it is that they are working against and uh, I think they would understand it better in this way by having two different concepts to work with. I don't expect that it will go into our normal language, but I think it's a good way of thinking for designers. But it goes into our normal lives, doesn't yeah. it? Every and so we have to, as you as a designer, yeah. have to go to the normal life of people and say, don't get that crappy design, get this good design. Is this, is this true or false? Yeah, but it's not so simple because <laughs> we want different things in different times. Uh, Don Norman, he wrote a very good book a couple of years ago uh, called Living with Complexity. And what he said is that we want complexity. We are an advanced society. We want a radio which can play different programs and uh, can, we can uh, adjust everything. We want complexity. And uh, my idea is that uh, the designer's role is to deliver complexity, many elements, in a simple, simple way. Yeah. That is our noblest uh, job as designers, to present a complex world in a simple way. And they are not contradictions. Um, they don't have to be contradictions. And you talk also about repetition as comfort and delight, not yeah. only a cliché. Yeah. Would you like to sort of well, talk more that, about that? That was a little uh, language pun I had there. Uh, repetition had a, has a bad reputation. That's right. Um, that's right. But uh, sometimes we like this repetition and uh, that gives a calming uh, effect. Um, architects use that. They uh, divide their facades in equal elements. And um, uh, to a certain degree, we want this repetition. But in all our life, we have this fight between two ones. One we want stability, identity, repetition, the quiet thing. And the other side, we want variation, experience all the time. Uh, we talked with a uh, psychologist in Copenhagen about these things, and he said the ideal city would be a city where all buildings were situated on a turntable, so they could turn five degrees every day. Yes. We could still find our way home, but it would be a new experience every day. Yes. I'd like to confer uh, to use that in our situations. We want both things. If you have a book and you have every spread is exactly the same with pictures, 
you think you have been there before, it gets a little boring, you also want some experience while you go by, uh, through the book. So the designer's job here is to have a grid which gives a recognition, but at the same time you cross those lines you have made yourself. You also talk about Apple as great designers, about the iPad and the iPhone, and how they have introduced a new concept of, I guess, everyday use design into our lives. Would you like to explore that a little yeah, bit for well, me? Uh, Apple, are a little Apple, Apple products are a little discussed now. A lot of, the, or not a lot, but some designers think that they uh, have lost the good idea that they make um, simplicity with appear simple. It's simple for appearance, but it's not so simple to use anymore. But I think that they have done great, simple products, both to look at and to work with. Do you get frustrated walking the streets, walking the shops, walking around? No. What do you, how do you respond to the textuality and discourse of no, no, design and signage and the lived environment? Not at all uh, uh, frustrated. I like this variation with this there, and uh, I don't expect everybody to do exactly what I'm saying. I'm not saying. I'm only saying that simplicity plays a certain role in designers' lives, in their professional life. No, I like the variety and I like to go to Venice and lose my way and I like to go to the car, uh, to. Um, Casper and Marrakesh and things like that and lose my way. I like this variation and I like that um, not all people go in uh, black designer shirts <laughs> and have some flowers on. Yeah, no, I'm very liberal with things like that. Yeah. So if you were talking to a designer, would you speak very differently from how you would speak to a consumer of that design in your writing? Yeah, I think I would. I, I, don't really write to consumers. I write to designers most right. of the time, and I would use a terminology which is theirs. And uh, yeah, I would do that in different ways. But um, I don't talk to many uh, consumers. Not uh, that I don't want, but uh, that's not what I do. No, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Um, so what you do also is you look after um, the ways in which we think about qualitative and quantitative dimensions and the ways in which we talk about these things and uh, the degree of general simplicity in design. Is that how you see yourself as the simplicity guru? I don't, I don't know. I have done very simple design as you can see from my books but um, I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm a guru in this field, but uh, I like I think we can give that to uh, you, Pierre. Uh, I've, 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 I, I like simplicity. Uh, when I'm home in, in Denmark, I still my car is parked in Copenhagen. Uh, when I'm home in Copenhagen, we go to my cabin in the woods outside Copenhagen, and that's very simple. That is really for cabin fever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like the simple things. Um, one thing which is important about simplicity, that is, is it simple to everyone or only to people who have learned something. Um, if you um, are about to abandon a ship and you have to grab the rescue belt, life belt or something, it would be nice if you could understand immediately, without training, without reading anything, how it should be used. But on the other hand, when you buy a new iPhone or something, you don't mind to use a couple of hours to really learn it, how to do it. Uh, so there is a simple, uh, immediate, general simplicity which you can use immediately, and then there is a kind of advanced, special simplicity which you have to invest in sometimes. And the designer's job is to think when they are doing a new product, how will that be used? Will there is it is their life at stake? Uh, will they have no training when they have to use it, the consumers? Or is it something where they are very interested and they will use it again and again and they would not be afraid to invest a couple of hours to learn how to do it? So the designer clearly plays an incredibly important role in our uh, very advanced Western society and as you look through history, as you've said, you'll see design at every level of every time very different designs, yeah. very different ideas yeah. of what it is to live and yeah. how to live with them. Yeah, that's right. Designers make products and environments, but more important, they make situations. When you have a coffee pot with a thing on the top and uh, you turn it around and you scold your children, that's a situation. Mm. When, uh, that's a situation which is prepared by the designers. So 
what we've learned from you today is the importance of simplicity, the importance of design, a passion for design and a passion for reading and writing. Is there anything you'd like to say just to wind up today? No, I think that's more or less what you talked about. Yes. Um, back to the reading there, um, I think that um, writers who are not writing about design sometimes say very precise things which you can use in design. Uh, I have a number of quotes from um, authors of fiction with which are, who, who are saying things about writing, uh, about the simplicity of writing, which are directly usable in design. Well, thank you very much, Pierre, for all of these very interesting things about design and life, design and commerce, design and desire, really, I suppose, too. And I wish you well with your future projects. Thank you. Good to be with you. Thank you very much. This has been a Swinburne production.